Okay. Um, so we had uh, yeah, a little situational scrimmage. We got some live work in tonight, which was good. We needed that. Uh, I thought the uh, the effort was really good tonight. Execution will improve. Uh, we got a chance to play a lot of guys. So kind of your typical first scrimmage. Get a lot of guys in there. Let guys tackle live. Let guys try to break tackles. Um, see if, if uh, we can move the ball down the field. Uh, what's going to happen in certain situations. We've been emphasizing that quite a bit. And I thought the guys handled it well tonight. Uh, I was proud of them, just the effort. I thought the effort was there. Uh, urgency, we talked about that. It can always be a little better, but it's first scrimmage. You know, there's a little bit of nerves and um, being in the stadium, guys are excited. Some of the new players that haven't been in the stadium, you know, they, they look forward to that. But just a few standouts. I thought uh, Demari Alston ran the ball well today. So we had a couple of freshmen that stood out. Demari Alston stood out, thought he ran the ball really well. And then Camden Brown uh, had a touchdown tonight. So those are two freshmen that, that I thought played well. Um, and then uh, other than that, um, you know, everybody got some opportunities uh, on the offensive side. Uh, so a few catches here and there for everybody, like two to three catches. Barr had, had three catches. Um, Shanker had a couple catches. Fromm had a couple catches. Uh, Shanker also had a touchdown tonight, which was good. So just kind of getting the tight end the ball. Um, quarterbacks, uh, I thought all, all did some really good things. Uh, Finley operated well tonight. Uh, that was good to see. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I thought he, we had a long drive on the very first drive with the, with the first group is about 14 plays. Uh, so he executed well on that drive. I thought, uh, Robbie did well too, uh, making some plays and, uh, operated the huddle and, and did some good things on that part, on his part. Uh, Calzada solid tonight, had a touchdown as well. Um, Carlson was four for four. So it was good to have him back out there too, just after the injury and to see him get out there and get a few kicks. Um, he's been really doing well in camp, but tonight was good to be out in the stadium. I think for him as well. Uh, we had a few set. We, we didn't have the quarterbacks live, so it was hard to to really gauge the sacks. Uh, but Derek and Eku, both those guys were coming off the edge, and they were doing a really good job. Um, but we had Eku credited for a sack. I think Derek would have had a one or two in there as well. Uh, and then uh, at the end of it, there we did a little goal line period, and there was a fumble, and Craig McDonald picked it up and ran for about uh, 95 yards on it. So it was a great play. Uh, I don't know which linebacker it was that, that kind of came through there and made the, the fumble actually happen. Uh, but Craig picked it up and ran it in and that was how we finished it out. So it was good for the defense, good energy uh, that way. And overall, I thought, you know, we got some good work in. Um, we're a ways away from where we need to be. I think guys know that. So the next step is Friday will be our next scrimmage. And then what do we do tomorrow to get ready for that? So just the preparation, the urgency, all those things are going to be key factors as we start to um, dive into a little bit more of the depth chart and what we want that to look like going in the second scrimmage. So uh, overall, I mean, no decisions right now are going to be made at this point. We'll watch the film tonight. Tomorrow we'll correct. And then Monday will be a day off for these guys. And they start school on Tuesday. So Monday will give us a chance as coaches to kind of go back, evaluate, look at where we are, uh, maybe move some guys around the depth chart, start pinpointing maybe some more specific spots for them. That will include special teams, which is a key factor for us as well, just with the travel squad. And then dialing that in before that second scrimmage on Friday. And then after that, you know, you've got to start getting it down to your to your two deep, uh, your scout teams, and then really getting on to Mercer in your first few games so you're prepared for that. So that's where we are right now. And with that, questions. Uh, what, what have you seen from TJ Cameron in terms of maybe his development since the last season? Now, I've always been impressed with TJ as far as just his command. He understands. He, he's very much like a coach on the field. He understands what we're trying to accomplish. I think he's conceptually picks things up very quickly, um, listens to the details and all little nuances of plays and, and what everybody's supposed to be doing. If there's a coaching point made, not just for him, but anybody, he'll remember that coaching point and be able to echo it whenever it comes up or remind guys, you know, and doesn't have to be a coach, which you appreciate. So there's just a lot of – I think, um, uh, let me say this, he's got a really good understanding of what we're trying to accomplish, all right, and he listens to those things. So uh, I appreciate that. I thought tonight he was good, um, led the team down the field. Uh, I think he executed well when he needed to in some critical moments. Um, can improve in just kind of some of the the easier throws that, that we didn't complete tonight. Um, don't know if that was him or not, but – I think there's some things that we can improve in those areas just from an accuracy standpoint. But overall, I thought he operated well. Coach, you mentioned some of the newcomers, the freshmen, and I know you mentioned Trey McDonald by name. Any other 
players that you got in the portal in the offseason that you felt like stood out for you? Well, yeah, on the D line, yeah, I mean, and I know it's uh, Jason Jones. Jason Jones looks good out there. You know, Jeffrey Emba's coming along. I know he's not a portal guy, but um, those two new players, uh, Morris, I think has done a really good job. And Morris can play. You know, he's not the biggest guy out there on the field, but he does understand the game. Understands leverage. Um, he's got some suddenness to him where he can really move and, and do some things, change of direction, uh, which is really helpful that way. Um, offensively, uh, you know, I didn't really get it. Desalen's playing, but I don't think he had a. I don't think he had a catch tonight. But he's out there um, and and getting reps. So we got to see what he can do with the ball in his hand. But I thought some of the freshmen, you know, stood out. But those transfer guys, they're getting opportunities. Marcus Bragg is is getting more and more opportunities on the edge, uh, doing some things for us on special teams. So all those guys are contributing somehow, some way right now. Um, it's just going to take a little bit more time for them. Keontae Scott just got here. And he's not a transfer, but that guy can play. And he's back there. He's doing some things for us. And he just, you know, he hadn't been through the whole summer, so he's just kind of catching up. But he's got a lot of natural ability, and you can see that he's he's going to be a guy for us. And, you know, right now we need that. And I think that's secondary from what I've seen. Coach Etheridge, that group, they're doing a good job, you know, getting themselves prepared. And it was good to see Owen out there tonight. You know, he ran around and, and uh, looked like Owen and making plays and, uh, Wesley Steiner is a guy too. You know, people haven't asked much about him. He's a guy that's really coming on. I think he's having a great training camp, and, and has made you know quite a few plays. So he's just getting better and better. And Cam Riley, we've talked about him, but those are some guys that have stood out. Yeah, I think he's just a you know the one thing about you know having guys that that uh, and tailbacks that run the ball I mean you don't want to overcoach him he's just got a good feel for it he knows where to go as far as his aiming point and then I think he's just got a good feel for you know when the play opens up to hit it if the play's breaking down what to do and he doesn't lose many yards um, he's got a pretty good change of direction when he has to uh, he showed a good burst tonight he had a one where he bounced and he turned it on and um, got caught but you know showed a good burst getting around the edge and I thought overall, just him running the ball tonight looked like he he understood what we were trying to accomplish, had a good feel for what the old line was doing, and was just kind of getting into a groove, maybe more than anybody else. I, you know, early on we ran Tank. You know, that was one of the emphasis tonight. We wanted to run the ball, and and Tank got quite a few carries early on. He did well too. He ran hard, and he was running against the blue defense, so he was he was out there, um, you know, taking some hits and all that. But he was running powerful tonight as well. Yeah, I thought they were solid. I want to go back and watch. I thought they were solid. There were some good things I saw. We had a few plays that we got penetrated on. But overall, I thought those guys, um, there wasn't a lot of negative plays from that standpoint. I think, you know, we have to do a better job of, of getting some push. But there was some good run. There were some good run lanes they created. I, I just think our D-line, our D-line's doing a good job. And I think we got some guys in the D-line that can play. So that, especially with that first group, I think that's a challenge for the O-line. So when they're getting positive runs, uh, I think that's that's good for the offensive line. But I thought tonight we came off the ball. Um, we we worked our combinations together well. So those things stood out to me. And we had our chances, too. We had our chances. You know, we, we got to break some some tackles with some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. But overall, I thought we moved the pile. And there, really until that last, there might have been a couple plays that we got immediately penetrated on, one being the last play at the end there on the goal line, which you don't want to have happen. But that's that's where it came up that was on the O-line. So. Um, other than that, they did a pretty good job tonight. Brian, can you look at certain quarterbacks? How do you gain separation? Has there any of that shown in the last couple of weeks? Uh, there, there's some. I'll, I'll watch it tonight, and I think we'll see some of that on film. And that's the one thing I told our guys. Every one of those guys want to play, and and we're going to play the best guys. They all deserve an opportunity to go out there, which we've given every one of our guys to showcase what they can do. And now we got to start making some decisions. All right, we got to start figuring out, all right, who's going to get a little bit more reps. But as far as the quarterback goes, I watched the whole thing, sideline all the way to the field, how we operate in between plays, the sense of urgency, how fast we call the plays, how fast we get to the ball, how we check things, how we get our offense into the right situations, all those things come into play. So it's not just, 
hey, that guy throws the ball, you know, perfectly or you know, the best every time. Um, you want that, but like, how's he operating? Right? What's he doing? Is this guy going to help us in the run game? Can he help us, you know, with his feet? Can he do some things in the pass game? Um, so there's a lot more other factors. And then, you know what? Hey, you're watching how accurate they are. You're watching the decision making uh, decision making process. So um, that's what I was looking at tonight. What I told those guys tonight, I wanted to see him lead. That's what I wanted to see. From the sideline on the field, that was the number one thing for me. Coach Keesaw can figure out the rest. I want to see these guys lead. And I want to see them just operate our offense. And I thought, for the most part, they did a good job. We didn't have a lot of delay of games. We had one. One delay of game. We didn't have a ton of bad snaps or just sloppy football from the quarterback play. We can get better, but it wasn't that sloppy from, from their end. You mentioned it being harder to gauge sacks with quarterbacks, not live. Does that also make it a little harder to gauge a guy like Robbie, who, you know, yep. point out how <laughs> yeah, no questions. That that's the that's the give and take. Man, this is the thing that sucks about being the head coach is you got you want to protect your quarterback and then you're not getting sacks. And he's also if he's a guy that can go, he's telling you he can break every tackle. Right? I've had guys like that. So that's I think you know the competitive juices in both both guys on the edges and the quarterback. You want to see that. But he's Robbie's a guy when he takes off, he can go. You know he's he's shown that he's got uh, exceptional speed. You know our edges they will get around and they can bend the corner. And, you know, that's the give and take in, in bowl. So they, they all know. Here's the one thing. Our guys know. They know they kind of run by, and, and they're going to razz each other a little bit. But at the end of the day, if the quarterback takes off and the rest of the guys get work, and we thought it was a sack, but the other guys get a chance to go tag off on them and everybody's working to try to catch them, then we're all getting better that way. But it's going to come a point now we're live. That's the one thing for the quarterbacks. You got to understand that. And so we try to go back and make sure they understand like that's going to be a hit. That's going to be a sack. That's going to be this. And, and not just say that because they're wearing the orange jersey that they're going to be able to get away from that in a real game. Can you give an example of what each quarterback has shown some of that leadership or some of those things that we don't get to see? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's quite a few of those. I mean, it's, um, we could be here all night if we want to talk about that, really. Let, let me just say this. Every guy, so from when they enter the huddle to when that play is, that play is called to when we get to the field, or how we take the field, um, are we looking at the things we need to, the play clock? All right, are we, are we moving the guys around and getting them where they need to? Are we making some adjustments, right? Guy breaks the huddle and lines up, and the tailback's on the wrong side and doesn't correct it. There's an example. That's not good. Right, you leave the huddle and you come to the field and the tailback's on the wrong side, he should be on the other side, and you don't correct it, that's an opportunity to lead. That's an opportunity for you as a quarterback to get things right. All right. So those things happened. And you gotta be able to you gotta know it. You gotta know your system. You know, and so you see other you see guys and they're lining up incorrectly. You know, you come out of a huddle or you're on the field and they're lined up wrong. You already know they're wrong, you're already moving them. I mean, there's an example of leading your offense on the field where you already know, like he's in the wrong spot before he's even getting there and you tell him to go the other way. You know, those are things you want to see from your quarterback. They know what's going on. They know everybody's job. They know what everybody's doing. They know the alignment and the assignment of every single player around him. And you can tell that very quickly about a quarterback because he is observing and he'll know right away that is wrong. And you'll see him look right at him and you'll know when a guy has no clue they're lined up wrong and they're just looking down and, and waiting for the snap and everything's wrong. You know, and that's the type of stuff you have to you have to correct as a quarterback. You can't let that happen. You've you gotta know. Go ahead. Uh, you, you mentioned a couple of them, uh, but how are the receivers doing? Anybody that's uh, catching your eye? Yeah, well, I think you know, Camden's a young player, I think, that's catching our eye right now. Uh, I think Var's doing a good job. I think um <clears throat> I think Shed's had a good camp. So far, we got to get in the ball a little bit more, and and uh, in some of these situations, but <clears throat> those guys have stood out. Um, <clears throat> so those are guys. <clears throat> excuse me. Those are guys now that I've seen that that are making some plays, and I think the whole group um, with Coach Hilliard has has made a lot of progress. That's what I think. You know, they run. That's a group that runs all the time, and there's been very few issues out of that group. They're working, they gotta get better. They're, we ask them to do a lot of things and be in a lot of different positions. Um, but overall, I mean, they're all, they know what to do, they know where to go. Um, I think they've practiced hard. I think they've competed well. And 
you know, again, with that group too, we got to start kind of getting that down to here's the guys that are going to make the play. Shed was, Shed had a great catch tonight. Um, and, you know, I, who else in there? Var, like I said, um, Coy. Coy had one tonight. You know, Coy probably has, should have another one too. It's just right behind him. You know, Coy's coming on too. He's a guy you're talking about from, from a guy that transferred in. He's going to be, he's going to be a good player for us. And he's getting all the little nuances of our offense down. And so those guys, those guys all have a role right now. And we got to start getting a little bit more detailed moving forward. But I think those guys are all doing a good job. We're talking about social media now? <laughs> huh? Well, I mean, you, you tweeted it. Huh? You tweeted it at appropriate times. Yeah. I guess. Timing's everything, right? <laughs> Ron, when the linebackers you mentioned some of those guys already. How much of the have you promoted with your purchase? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think, like I talked about Steiner, I think he's really stood out. I think Cam Riley is starting to really – come into his own as far as being a long, athletic, physical guy that knows what he's doing. And those guys, all three of those guys I mentioned, Owen being included, right, students of the game. Eugene Asante. You know, Eugene missed a lot of spring when his father passed away, and so he's catching up right now. And um, I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Robert Woodyard tonight. All right, he made some plays. Now, there was a couple – um, when he got pushed back and you kind of, you know, you kind of think he's just going to kind of react like a freshman and all that. He kind of got pushed back and like, what's going on? And the very next play, he ripped right through whoever tried to block him and made the tackle. Like he got upset and it was like, it's time to play. And you could see that guy really turn it on, you know, that, but I also think that's, that's part of like Christian, you know, coach Robinson's mentality in that group, right? Those guys are going to know what to do. And then we want to play physical. So I think, I've been really impressed with our linebackers. Um, you know, Tisdall, I mean, the, all these guys, you know, there's guys that, that played for us a little bit last year that are, that are, are show, showing up and then will be guys that will, will help us. Whether it's right at linebacker or special teams, they're going to be out there doing something. And I think that group has kind of elevated the whole standard of that room to what they want to accomplish, you know, each and every practice. Well, you mentioned that Tate got a little bit of a nerve, but he did, yeah. Tate did. Uh, Tate and Avery both, those guys. Um, and I think, you know, they're both doing a good job. Yeah, again, another year in the weight room, stronger, um, better shape, better understanding of what we're doing. Uh, those guys, and I think, you know, both those guys have really come on and done some positive things. Um, and they're both getting, you know, more reps. I tell you, Brendan Coffey is a guy that that's starting to, to shine. And we all know, if you guys have ever seen him, he's very athletic. This guy is is starting to understand what we're doing. And so Coffee's coming on. He's kind of bouncing around between tackle and guard, which is good. But he is he's a guy that's um, I think has been much improved from where he was. So those guys are in the mix. <clears throat> um, they're helping us. And you know, the rest of the guys, you know, Trox, Killian, both those guys, I mean, they're they're on your edges there. They're doing a good job. Colby Smith is coming on. He's getting better. And he's starting to grow up. I think he's kind of growing into his body now a little bit where he can move it and and execute with that long body he's got, which is good to see. So, you know, there's some things happening on the O-line, which is positive. You mentioned Andrew Mitchell. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we're not uh, – I mean, Andres is going. Um, yeah, we don't have anybody out that's, you know, from surgeries and all those things that's that's not ready to go. We've got a few little nicks, hammies, and just kind of bumps and bruises right now, but nothing that from the surgeries that's going to keep anybody out at this point. Yeah, I like what they're doing. Uh, we can move now. That's one thing. I think we can get from point A to point B very quickly. I think uh, the communication in the back end has been good. I like what Coach Etheridge and Coach Schmetting are doing with those guys. Uh, I think uh, Donovan Kaufman has really emerged as a guy that's communicating well back there. And so you got Donovan Kaufman, you got Nehemiah Pritchett, um, Simp, those guys. I mean, they're, you know, they played a little bit, 
I think they're all communicating well. And you got a guy like Caden Bridges now that's coming on, and he's very talented. Um, still young, but he's he's learning. But that guy is going to be a player for us once he gets everything figured out. So we feel good about him. Uh, Marquise Gilbert, you know, is another guy that can play back there. And I think tonight, I want to see what what it looked like with him. I saw a couple live pops that he was in on. I think he did did a good job on it. So I want to see how he's tackling and, and how he's playing physically. You know, just downhill. Um, so those are a few guys, you know, on the back end that I think are doing a really good job. But I, I like the way they're training. That's what I'd say. I think in practice, how they're training, what they're doing, the drills they're doing, how they're communicating, some of the stuff we're trying to get done schematically with them is has helped those guys. And it's good to see, you know, kind of a progression from that back end. And they did a good job tonight. They got the offense in some third downs. I thought they covered well on scrambles. And they, they were on their guys. There was a couple of tip balls we didn't get, but we should get them. And they have in practice, so I think that will come if we just keep doing what we're doing.